Hey everybody, this is Day Trader Rockstar. I'm jumping on here today, Friday, early morning video. Paul's on the mic. I just noticed a uh, the p potential divergence here, so I want to start uh, going over this right here. We're going to actually take this trade right now um, with a stop under the recent lows, which represents this candle. And the reason I'm doing this is we start to see we have this rising um, stochastic oscillator here as the price is, starts to push down here. Now I don't, I didn't really. Um, I'm not really managing my profit area. I want to continue just to watch this real close. The main thing is just to keep that stop underneath this candle. It's a pretty decent candle. We look for the divergence and a reversal candle to establish our stop. Uh, and watch this rotation here, this first uh, fast rotation. I call it the fast, a fast, medium, and then the slow below us. I want to move this down a little so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. And then watch what happens here. So we're going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do a little uh, experiment today. Try to um, try to do my research. Try to trade some of the futures and try to record each of those setups and kind of explain each of the setups. And um, we're just going to do one contract. And we're going to try. You know, I'm going to try to be as, as disciplined as I I can. If I see that the uh, uh, the indicator is rotating back up a little fast, and we might not have a tremendous profit. Maybe we have 12 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. You know, we'll take that and we'll continue to take that all day. But as long as the important thing is to understand why we're getting in and why we're getting out. So that's the uh, that's what we're going to do today. And it doesn't have to, you know, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But it's important to uh, kind of let's like see the market here reversing here fast here. Sometimes these days could be a, a long process of, uh, oh, there's our first trade. First trade here just took us out. Now, sometimes what we have is called a running divergence, and that's where we start to see that divergence play out, but that even though the price continue to push down here. So, I mean, it's a rare event. We'll see, um, you know, we might have to just get right back into this because the uh, setup is still there. You want to really have a good candle, and it was, it's tough. It's in the first, uh, first uh, really, hour of the trade. And... Uh, Turn that down here in the background there. You know, sometimes you always feel like they come after you too. You put your stop up there, you put your stop up, and then can they read it? Can they chase it? Can they find it? I'm also using a new charting program here. This is the Medved uh, Trader. And um, I'm just uh, consul um, configuring some of the candles and stuff, trying to make it a little cleaner looking. So bear with me if you do see it changing around here. So it looks like that divergence here kind of failing now. So we have to wait for another uh, divergence setup. This one was working out pretty good. We got a little pop up to the 20, but then we started dropping back down. Um, we're still seeing a slight. Let me get my trend lines up here slight little you know the lower price here and the higher price uh, the higher rotation here it's also on the ram and the bush one so it still is actively a um a divergence now behind the scenes i am paying attention to uh retail today went out on a, a, a you know big call today saying that retail is going to be the best bet of the day and even though this market here is pulling back here Retail continues to push new highs on the session. Macy's here pushing new highs. Kohl's pushing new highs. Best Buy, Bed Bath & Beyond pushing uh, new highs. And um, Gap Stores pushing new highs.
So this flag still looks good. I don't have to go with this again. You know. Hold on. Let's wait here a second. Hold on. I don't want to get in there too fast. Let me cancel. Order me, canceled. Let me cancel that. Um, Oh, now we start to bounce here. You can't be chasing these things too much. It's very choppy. I'm, I am seeing those divergence playing out, though. We're going to go for it again. We'll put our stop right underneath the recent lows. Let's put a market order in there. Uh, you know, I'm kind of chasing this. So I like the wedge pattern. There's a couple uh, techniques we like. We like that 65 to 75% area of the uh, wedge pattern to break out. We are starting to see that turn back up. We have a series of lower lows and a series of higher lows. We have this little divergence. So go with this as a little wedge pattern breakout. And let's see, we got to move up to 81. We have a target area at 80. I think that won't be a problem. So we'll leave that active right now. But I've uh, seen uh, killing it on the Macy's. I probably could have had a little better entry on that. All right, now it looks like we're really good here. Now it looks like we're really, really good. We do have that confirmation. That divergence was playing out. The hard part is, is is sometimes having to deal with this. This little, all right, we flushed it. We still had the divergence meaning that, you know, the oscillator is telling us that we are starting to see some buyers come in here, even though the price is, you know, it's starting to rotate here. There's more interest in the stock. There's more buyers in the stock as we start to see momentum here shift. But the price didn't reflect that. But it's, it's you know, and all... Um, and every way you look at it, it is one of the closest leading indicators you could have because we're starting to see that by even though the price hasn't moved, we're starting to see that interest. And we know, um, we know from years and years of trading how this pattern plays out and what this represents. So it's important to have that confidence in this and continue. The hardest part I always say is just being able to get out with that profit. We could get in and get into the green. The hard part is how far do we uh, look to take it? You know, is this the low of the session? Do we move this up? Do we do we just follow it up with a trailing stop? Uh, do we lock it in, wait for the next setup? These are all different strategies we could do, we could test out. Your profit target has been reached. And ow, sorry about that. So, all right, that's why it's sometimes great to have multiple contracts on. Multiple contracts are very important. That way, you could lock in your, your initial profit, and then follow it up with a break-even stop. So we'll try to do that today a little too. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit more focused today, not being on the radio, so it's easier for me to like you know concentrate on these and and, and make it a good show or at least a good video because now I can really concentrate and not to worry about you know customer, I'm not you know listener questions and everything else that goes along with running a show. Um, this is a great example. Hope you enjoyed that example. The first example did fail, and that's going to ha happen every so often, but it still gave us that sign that we were, we're in the right place at the right time. You know, that was the that's the important thing. Now, there's a big candle, but we're going to look for this to push higher. Um, you know, this was a textbook example. Textbook. So, 
what I'm going to do now is we're going to pause this. Well, we'll let this thing play out, and I'll try to give you a little play-by-play -play of how things is. Normally, what I'll do on, on this situation is take a look at this fast rotation. As that pushes up into the 80 mark there, that's where we want to really concentrate on taking profits into it because all bets are off. It, you know, we could guess where the market's going, but the odds are, like we go go back over here, back in the uh, when we see a um, an overbought um, fast rotation, typically leads to a little chop or a little pullback. The bigger trend could be up, but the uh, short term trend, which we're we're basing on, we're hitting run traders right now. Um, this is where we are. Like I said, we typically get a great move off of divergences. And even though I did take profits on this, um, I still want to stress how important a divergence, a lane divergence, and one that we uh, define live on the radio, how that has the has the um, the potential to be one of the bigger moves of the day. You know, when we look back at charts each day and we mark them out, we could go back and say what the best setup was. It usually starts with a lane divergence. I want to touch base with you just on a couple stocks here, too, even though I wanted to do this as an ES trade. We do juggle a lot of stocks here. Kohl's, Macy's, Best Buy, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, and Gap were our calls for this week, my call for this week as retail, expected retail to pop, especially today. Now, let's take a look at Kohl's. We had that divergence play out the lower lows, the higher lows, and we haven't gotten that real big pop yet. I still expect a lot more here on Kohl's, so... Take that one going into next week. Macy's here, which was the best bet. We're looking at a profit of 53. Look at how this thing's turning back up into our power zone. Another clear-cut divergence. Ba-boom. Baby, how do you like that one? And then we, uh, we did the Kohl's and then the BBBY here, Bed Bath & Beyond. Also continues to look good as a nice little divergence that was playing. Well, not even a real big divergence. Um, so all these here looking really, really good. Now... I'm going to move back over here. We're going to try to juggle so much. I'm going to try to make this the best video uh, that you can have today. <clears throat> and like I said, we're going to just going to kind of keep things just uh, really, uh, really, really tight. Let's see here. There we go. So we moved up to that 50 period moving average, which is this blue line. The green line represents the 20 period moving average. The red line re represents the 200 period moving average. Right now, we can start identifying other patterns. First of all, we had an HPS. This is called an HPS setup. Multiple uh, signals telling us to buy. We have a recognizable pattern. We have a lane divergence. <clears throat> we have a lower trend line zone. That's three of the, you know, that's three uh, indicators right there. Um, you know, and that was your trade. Trend line. We could go into detail a little bit more on this by saying, all right, here we have an underlying trend line here. Whenever we have a downward trend line or a downward wedge pattern, you take the lower trend line, um, you copy that, and you just kind of drag that, and you put it up here where you start that wedge pattern off. We could extend that back. And we look at that as, as a possible area of resistance or at least a pattern uh, set up. Right now, it looks like, you know, we're kind of in a little flag here. We're holding that 20-period moving average to hole in the 50. But is it an HPS setup? <clears throat> I don't think so. Um, it's just a little bit tougher right now because we don't have those signals. We know the signals that work. I know the HPS methods that work. You know, that's the hardest part is to wait for those things uh, to line up. That's why you're seeing the Macy's here rip today. Why you're seeing the Coles rip today. Why you're seeing the Gap rip today. Because the signals came on the chart and it told me that um, the same thing here why do we see this breakout here to this level because yeah it didn't happen here and that's gonna happen you know that is gonna happen alright so I'm gonna pause this we're gonna come back to the next HPS setup I'm gonna just do a little research because I got a lot of work to do today and um, it is about 1020 right now I'm not gonna do a whole video on this I'm not gonna do the whole day on the video because that would be uh, hell that would be a long time of talking I get nothing done so we're going to wait for that next good setup, and I'm going to come back, and we're going to do it, and we're going to take it. Just an update here. As you can see, we came out of that wedge, pushed up a little against the 50, pulled back, then pushed back up here right around that uh, you know, measured out channel line, and then chopping around. Um, no real setups yet. Again, we're just going to focus on HPS type of setups. We did a little flag here. It's not giving us much. 
uh, to look at. Not much. We're getting a slow rise on the uh, slow stochastic. This one seems to be just banging, banging around. This one's banging around. Uh, very choppy. The 200 period moving average is above us. Retail continues to be really strong. Um, Coles here just uh, continue to push higher. I just added to my Coles position. Uh, Gap here looking very good. Macy's looking really good. Things are looking really, really good. Bed Bath and Beyond looking really good. Very, very happy. Um, but we're going to come back for the next HBS setup. I just want to touch base and just uh, let you know that that's uh, that's the key here is not getting into something that you don't have a, a rhyme or reason. You know, your strategy, your criteria is important. The criteria should be, uh, you know, set in stone and you should take that in the criteria for your exits, your stops and everything else. We'll be back. Well, I'm back here with you. And, uh, the market's been going sideways. I've been taking profits. Uh, we've taken uh, some profits off of Macy's. Um, again, picked up some coals. We're holding on to the Gap, Bed Bath & Beyond. Look, looking good. Everything looking good. I mean, you got to see these stocks here. I am extremely happy. Coles here ripping higher. Bed Bath & Beyond here ripping higher. I think we're going to get some follow-through on these next week, too. So these are all ripping higher. Sent an alert earlier today just saying that this was on our focus as the best bet. Um, and this is now just unbelievable rip into these. So I'll move those back off the chart there. And again, you know, we're concentrating on some of the future setups. I mean, our, our stocks are wor working great. Apple breaking down right now. And we're seeing this sideways. And again, it's it's about not putting yourself in, in harm's way right now. We had a good setup here. There's, there hasn't been much here. Would you want to be in this chop? No. Um, so let's just wait for that next uh, possible setup. It just hasn't hasn't come yet. Excuse me. All right. Well, as you can see, we're just kind of rolling over sideways, staying within a tight range, not a good setup. We're starting to get oversold on the uh, fast, medium. The slow is starting to grind back down, but not oversold. Uh, we're approaching the lows of the session. So, again, not much uh, as an example. I was hoping to really take a lot of good trades today based off the HPS setups, but we're not seeing too many. We had that one wedge pattern uh, divergence setup. It worked out fine. Now we kind of rotated back down. Want to always pay attention to that five-minute time frame too. The five-minute time frame is key. Um, and we're looking at the daily, which is embedded to the upside. There's a lot of crap on the screen here, so I apologize for all the, those lines. But we do a lot of work. Um, uh, but let's take a look at the five-minute. And that five-minute also came into play. Early in the day, we talk about just the five-minute rotation, how important that is, having the, the wind in your sail. You know, when that five minutes starts to rotate back up, you have a better shot of the, uh, the price here kind of lifting up. But you see, not much going on. We're really in a tight, tight kind of a resting period right now, maybe waiting for something to uh, trigger us out of this. We try to get a little rotation up. We kind of failed and starting to push back down. You know what? If this trade, if this uh, comes out to be not a, you know, not of a big active day, that's just as fine too. You know, it's just, uh, you know, discipline and, and patience uh, sometimes has to be shown in the video. Nice sideways consolidation. It looks like we could be setting up for something on the five-minute chart. So let's take a look one one look at the sixty-minute time frame. Not much going on there. Um, and again, just go back to the futures, which is. Uh, And, uh, yeah, just waiting for that divergence to play out. All right, continued chop sideways, but something might be setting up here. You can see a base here being built um, off the lows. We have this little rotation back down. We continue to see pressure to the downside. We haven't pushed up against the 200 period moving average. Retail is on fire right now. PayPal actually on fire right now. Uh, some rumors out there, maybe a, a deal with uh, American Express, which would be huge for American Express. I mean, that would be, uh, and the price was uh, kind of cheap in the 40s, but um, we'll see what happens. It seems to be pushing a little bit higher right now. So um, a couple of things that we pay attention to. You know, we have that recognizable little channel line here. Let me just copy that down, drop it off down here. That kind of keeps us honest on that little downward channel. Um, uh, 
Didn't really see a divergence here. But we are feeling some little bit more upside as we base out here. Now, you know, uh, HPS, high probability, um, typically works out well. There's a couple cases where we start to see a base and a higher low on the stochastics. Normally, we look for that lower price or at least a double bottom. But, the, uh, you know, that is uh, showing strength here. You know, we got this slight little move up here. Again, you have to, you know, you have to pick and choose your battles. If you want to take this battle, the 200 period moving average right above us is probably a good target. And it looks like we can get sucked up, up, sucked up to that like a tractor beam. But I like the base right now. The base is playing out pretty good. We got to cross back up. We're kind of whenever we have a a series of higher lows on the um, on the stochastic oscillator, that's typical of a, a longer term trend too. So we started to see you know maybe this little higher low here being this the medium here, the uh, slow actually just kind of just grinding higher. Retail continues to push higher. Bed Bath and Beyond here 59 and change continues to push higher. Coles here at the highs, PayPal at the uh, highs, everything looking very nice right now. And here's our little pop. And I've been busy here. I've been getting a lot of things today. I've been just going, uh, it's probably like, uh, how many trades did I make today so far? I mean, not on the futures, but on the uh, on the stocks here. Wow, one, two, three. Sold some things, sold a lot, bought some, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, four buys, and again, just picking up some more of these uh, retail and the best bets for t uh, for next week. Looking good. And here's your 200 period moving average test. I could have probably taken this setup. I uh, just did into downward channel, showing that divert. You know, not the real pure divergence, but showing that strength with that higher lows, and uh, a nice base being put in here. Well, as you can see, I'm kind of a little, uh, you know, a little bored, but I'm doing a lot of work here. We got a couple of new HPS uh, on the site. I want to show you a little trick of the trade as I uh, continue to push through uh, the day here. And again, just checking in with you and kind of giving you this updated video. Um, you can see that the range today has been very tight. We had one HPS set up right now. We had a couple channels pushed out. We pushed up and chopped around. We're not getting any anywhere really. Um, little flags here, little pushes. Uh, that's about it. You know, I feel like the bias is to the upside, but again, this uh, purpose of the video is to kind of just uh, point out some of the HPS setups and and showing you the patience involved waiting those wait for waiting <laughs> waiting for those to uh, show up and uh, to trigger them. So while we do that, I want to show you um, you know wedge patterns. We had a great uh, some fantastic wedge pattern setups uh, on this week's watch list. And uh, I want to show you how one of the uh, ways I go about finding those. And I use a uh, site called Finviz. And Finviz is uh, F-I-N-V-I-Z, finviz.com. And if you go to the home page, this is what it looks like. It basically has a, uh, you know, just kind of a, um, a look of all the tickers and some of the gainers and the high lows and stuff. And over here you have actually have a, a market map we we refer to all the time. We kind of click on that; it'll give you a good view of what the market is doing um, in this kind of a, a sector type of breakdown. And you can see uh, utilities here strong in the bottom. I'll bring it that down here. Some of the industrial goods looking good. Uh, financials seem to be a little weak today, and everything else seems to be mixed up. It's a Friday, all right. So, but what I want to show you is you go up here to the top of Finvis, go to Screener, click on the Screener. And then over here, you're going to see a, a descriptive, fundamental, or a technical screener. Now, you could put in, you could do all kinds of screens with this. This is all free. Uh, if, you, if you like it and you use it, definitely pay for the uh, elite version of it. It's not that expensive. Uh, but to try it out, go to technicals. That's what we're going to look at. We go to the technical section there, and we go over here to patterns. Uh, patterns. And you pull down here, and you have all these patterns you could pull from. Uh, we're going to work on the wedge. Now you have a strong wedge, and a, down, a strong down wedge, and a regular down wedge. I use them both. Um, sometimes they, they pull up different. Sometimes they pull up the same stuff. But I, I just make sure that I click on that. And you get a list of stocks. In this case, there's a lot of them, uh, apparently. 
<laughs> there is a lot of them but what I like to do is take your market cap over here this this little tab right here click on this and I want to go from largest market cap to smallest that represents some really strong and big big cap stocks and then from that point on I want to click on charts now that we have it all listed up we click on charts and it'll just give us a nice uh, look at charts and I don't have this screen big enough I'm not able to kind of bring the screen a little bit bigger so because it locks me in on my um, thing let me see if I can move the, the site down here a little there we go I don't want to make it too small but you can always adjust it on your own so basically you're looking at all the stocks that have um, the patterns and what we're looking for really out, out of a um, a nice some of these have already broken out some of them it's, it's a hit and miss you want to just get a an overview maybe you could see something that you like I'm starting to like some of the drugs and, and uh, the looks like uh, Novartis here uh, maybe a double bottom in a wedge we look for certain things um, all the time we look for that uh, divergence um, in a wedge pattern this looks like it could have been a divergence here um, a couple of divergences played out I have to look at the under, underlying um, oscillators to see if there's a true divergence there but you know we want to just f also f focus on something that hasn't broken out of the wedge pattern yet if it's broken out you know maybe it's just a little too late but this is one of the ways I uh, like to screen for wedge patterns all right uh, this one over here is uh, foreign money center bank Barclays Barclays has a little a little um, wedge pattern going for it and it has a little lower low so I'll find one of these and I'll you know not it's not a stock that I typically trade but it has a it's a, you know a good name so I want to go back over here the market here is starting to move back up a little I want to bring up the, the BC uh, the BCS on this chart right here and again before we even do that we see the markets moving up I haven't looked at the SPX here that's the main one of my main uh, reasons to get into a, a scalp and that's important you can see that the bias is slowly moving up here and we're starting to get a, a little extended um, the last time we looked at it is our that divergence and we talked about the divergence earlier it might have been the best setup of the day typically divergences that I point out are uh, close if not the best setups of the day on a longer term trend divergence is really point that out now that the daily the five minutes getting a little extended there you know it hasn't had that uh, tremendous move all right so we're kind of cautious on this Friday but things are looking pretty good so let's take a look at the B C S and see if we have a divergence on that so we're gonna go back to that daily chart and we're gonna see uh, we took out the lows that's what that's one of the uh, characteristics of that divergence is that recent low here which was right about here and you can see the price trading underneath it now stochastics haven't crossed back up but this is typical of what we want to uh, how we're going to set up here if we actually start to cross back up and start to rally back up that'll give us divergence it's not a hundred percent there yet um, but it's close you know here we had a double bottom kind of divergence which would give us a nice little pop and again not a great example on this one uh, because it's uh, an ADR and it has lack less volume and just doesn't give a good chart but there's other ones out there I want to go now to the other scan here I'm going to go over to this uh, area here again we're going to go up to the top and that's the wedge down now I'm going to go to a strong wedge down and there we have uh, a little bit stronger wedges now um, a lot of them again are already broken out of the wedge patterns we tend to uh, grab them as they're pulling back into the lower trend line the lower wedge line and have that divergent set up most of these have broken out Aetna is interesting I mean it's already moved mm-hmm and as the market cap gets a little smaller I become a little bit more cautious on it that's sweet yeah some of these I'm not I'm not a hundred percent on let's take a look at N and that's sweet over here and some weeks you're gonna hit them some weeks you're not gonna see them I have other scans that I do uh, but that's just one of them. I like the visual scan. Now you can see daily when we typically drop lower and cross higher, that is our divergence. So you can see we kind of have that cross higher and that move lower on the price of the, and do that slow ramp back up. So it gives us that divergence look to that. 
a long drawn out wedge probably a little long for my my taste all right so nothing really coming up on that I have again like I have some other scans I'm going to do I have come uh, my own divergent scans that I've, I've worked on put in together um, I had to do a visual to confirm them the art in restaurants was uh, looks looks like one I want to actually write that down and come back to that on the watch list later on dart in restaurants interesting um, yeah that's about it on that let's get back and trade some futures I want to I want another setup here let me take a look at Dollar General fast yeah, Dollar General was one too it was that nice wedge pattern uh, divergence setup it's taken off it's breaking out it was a textbook really is a textbook setup on Dollar General all right hey back here with you it's about 2 15 I, I had to take a lunch so I missed uh, the last hour of the trade here and I could notice around 1 o'clock uh, we pushed up here but you could see here just to go back and kind of point this out even though I was not a part of this a great example of the divergences we look for this was a textbook example of a high divergence um, new highs diverging out um, momentum here shifting before the price shifts we take out the highs perfect I am upset that I'm not here but uh, it was a uh, you know it was lunch I had to do lunch damn but a great a great example of a nice divergence there whoa perfect picture perfect so let's see if we can catch something here on the downside. We're about to uh, set up as a triple threat. Triple threat is another HPS setup where we talk about um, having all three stochastics here getting back down under that 20 level. And then we look for that reversal candle. Now the triple threat versus the divergence. The divergence is by far the number one setup. Um, if the market decides to go into a little selling pressure here, we could get embedded down here, and it might be a little. So you always want to wait for that, that at least that reversal candle. I have a uh, candlestick counter here. I'll put it up here for now, and we put, pay attention to that to help us out, determine if we're going to get a reversal candle or not. Sometimes we get an early reversal when it's early in the candle, and it's going to be hard. It could pop a point or two before that even happens. But you know what we'll, we'll deal with that if it happens so let's just continue to see if uh, we do get any type of divergence set up market here is breaking back down I see Paul here mentioned some kind of trend line back there so let me go out here and take a look at what he has he has this trend line up here oops let me fix this Not a bad, not a bad trend line. Retail still holding great strength. All right, here we have the triple threat set up here. You have the reversal candle. So you had that triple threat. Again, you had to be fast on it. Yeah, a, a triple threat means represents a hammer, profit target, an engulfing pattern, a piercing pattern, outside period uh, candle, something that uh, represents a, a breakdown and a close near the highs of the session while all three stochastics are underneath that 20 line. So we had an initial little reversal. If you could start to measure that out around 2082, it's pushing back up. Again, not the the ultimate HPS, but a good one. You know, we you could take this. And the reason you could take this is because it really establishes a uh, a stop. You know, the stop could be just uh, relative to the or actually placed right underneath that candle low. And our uh, profit potential here could be measured out by using the moving averages or the rotation here. And that's uh, how you want to look at it. We want, also want to take a look at that five minute time frame on the SPX. And the five minute time frame, we're going to look on the SPX here for a second. And look at that, we're starting to get oversold here. 
So we had one oversold, two oversold, three oversold. You know, this has been pretty intense um, and, and exact. So I'm liking this a little bit more. So let's let's get set up here. Maybe we'll take this. Let me copy this, print the screen here on that, and then post that in the uh, room here. All right, now maybe we get a divergence with that five minute. Do we have an underlying trend line here? It's already given us that reversal candle, but because we have that underlying trend line, five minutes set up, you know, I've, you know, seen the results of these divergences. It makes me only want to take divergences. So sometimes we kind of shy away from that triple threat. Um, even though it does have a, a good, you know, a higher percentage uh of working out it's not a divergence but it definitely it probably has a good shot of working out here let's give it a second So we're looking at, um, let's look at the five minute. So we're looking at a, maybe a little channel set up here. Holding off of this setup because it's, you know, it is a suspect turn line underneath us. It's a Friday. The possibility of a divergence would happen here. This is typically how a divergence would set up. You have this kind of a small little um, consolidation, a little ramp up, a little pushback up here, and then a fast flush takes out the lows, but we don't rotate down here to the new lows. So we could actually get down here and actually put a nice divergence in.
So let's see if that actually sets us up for that divergence. Lows of the session is at 2077, which is uh, about four points underneath us. 2750. Uh, now we have the first the first couple uh, signals of a divergence. We have the lower low. Yet we have the potential of a, a, po a possible higher low on the stochastic. It's not yet confirmed. And you can see here we haven't really confirmed any divergence yet. We really want to see that divergence confirm before we uh, take advantage of the opportunity. We have an X marks the spot below us based off of this pivot area and these three pivots. Um, maybe still something here to, to play out here. All right, now we're going to see um, what this market's made of because we have a triple threat set up yet. We don't have a, a divergence, I'm going to call it, but we have a, what we call an X marks the spot, two trend lines converging at one uh, plus a triple threat. So we had a triple threat. Now we look look for that reversal candle here. Might actually act a little bit better.
So not a not a not a divergence. Not a divergence, but a triple threat, uh, what we call an X marks the spot. Triple threat. So a little decent candle here. Took out the lows. You should get a little bounce here. And not much to probably grab out of this, but maybe a possible little bounce would be very tight with this. And um, again, I think it would be a little bit higher risk trade for a little bounce setup here. Remember, we're taking a look at that five minute chart too. And that five minute is on our side, which I do like. I do like that five minute on our side. So with the five minute on our side, maybe a, a final flush here. I, I never mind if we actually break down through, uh, through a trend line like this. I don't mind that. Hmm. We're at 79. Again, sorry. Seems to be a little slow. I just wanted to follow this up just in case we do get a trade off here. I want to be able to show it to you. I might edit this just to kind of clean up some of the uh, dead air. Take one more look here at the uh, cash. You have the 200 period moving average right underneath us. Keep on coming down. All right, so you know, because we're breaking down here, we're embedded. It's going to be harder on the timing here. Five minute is set up. Ten seconds left. Is there a possible trade here? Reversal candle here starting to play out a little. Two, one. Not a big candle. A little better candle here now starting to play out. Well, Ten seconds left in this candle. Again, triple uh, set up here. Recent lows here at 77. We have an outside day. We're going to take a shot here. So we take a shot here. Let's take a shot here with a stop underneath this candle. Now I'm kind of rushing this a little. Thank you. 
a uh, little piercing pattern pushing back into the previous candle that's holding up above our stop right above the lows we're just looking for a little bounce here maybe we're up to uh, 2080 um, lots of times you'll break down through this channel line just to retrace back up to it 20 period moving average coming down to meet it I might let this uh, move up a little. Try to grab a point off of this. To, uh, 80, 20 and a quarter. I mean, uh, 80 and a quarter. <clears throat> That clicking sound you hear is what we call crickets. Your profit target has been reached. And there's our retracement back up here. And that's kind of started off of that uh, that um, reversal candle. Now, again, could be another good longer-term setup with that five-minute. Remember, the key here was just having that five-minute on our side, too. Try to keep the type is, um, trying to keep a very tight stop. It worked out. But... Um, Here we pushed up against that 20 and also against that retracement trend line. So we'll just mark that off. We like to mark off these HPS type of setups. So we had a triple reversal candle. Um, that was it. If you take a look here, you can start to see this is actually starting to turn back up a little. So you have a good shot here. There's a good shot for a little bit further more uh, action, but again, we're out of the trade right now, so we're not uh, taking advantage of that. Lots of times we get a breakdown of a trend line. We push back up to the trend line, especially with the 20 coming down. You can see us running into problems and starting to rotate back. So not a bad setup. We had all the criteria of what we look for. Um, the piercing pattern the follow through the retracement trend line order canceled Yeah, this looks pretty good. key here would be um, actually seeing a little divergence set up. If, even if we took out the lows again and kind of give us a divergence, we didn't. We had that flat line. We have uh, pretty weak, um, slow, medium, and a little rotation. 
So we pushed up against that retracement trend line, the trend line that we broke down through. We look for that retracement combined with the 20, bouncing back off to the downside. Standard operating procedure playing out. We have to wait for the next setup here. Now, as you can see, we're kind of rotating back here pretty fast. We didn't really s slow down on the, um, oh, there we go, we're starting to turn over just a little here. Starting to rotate back down. We're still flatlining. Looks like a, you know, a little flag. I would like, for me, I would like to set up to be a little divergence. So we need to take out these lows and then uh, put a decent bounce in here. And it doesn't happen all the time. I mean, there's other other uh, other levels that are playing out in this market. So, as you can see, we're kind of rotating over a little, but not much. Came down. Sometimes we look at a double bottom as a divergence, especially if we actually cross back up on that double bottom. Your profit target has been reached. Now, normally, you know, like I said, it, sometimes we could count a double bottom. If we get that cross up, we haven't gotten it really. We're starting to see it here on the fast a little, starting to turn back up. I'm waiting for a true, true blue divergence. All right. Well, here we have the um, look at that Shake Shack for next week. But we do have that. You know, now we have that flush. Took out the lows. Definitely put, looking like. Um, we're not ready to take out the lows here, but one thing we could uh, mention here is that the Dow futures here are making new lows. So, you know, sometimes we have lagging lagging uh, sectors that just catch up. I mean, we haven't we have uh, lows here now at 76 and a quarter. 76 and a quarter. We just made lows. We have a pivot area right down here. Main pivot right down here, main pivot of the uh, day. Wow, look at that, the breakdown on that 60. Now, seeing that breakdown on the 60 is uh, not the worst scenario. I like how we pull back real fast on these. Looks like there might be a little bit more downside.
All right, here comes the pivot. No divergence yet. This one is just sinking. We're going to just let this play out. We'll come back when the setup is there. I'm seeing another divergence here. I want to jump on here fast. We're seeing a slight divergence to the upside off the pivot area. I'm a little late on this, so I'm not going to chase it. But uh, I was just walking over on the other side. I heard the crickets. I, can't, I ran back here. I'm listening to uh, Keldar uh, tight stops. And you can see there's a, a you know we talked about maybe the double diver the double bottom um, divergence where we start to see a double bottom but we see that change of um, momentum here shifting back and I think that would have, that was one that got by me like I said I ran back over here listening to this I had to uh, just walk on the other side of the office for a second and uh, came back now seeing it set back up here I'm feeling that uh, chasing it probably will work out. We take a shot here again the object of this whole thing was to show you the discipline and uh, you know that's the toughest part of being a trader is the discipline you know discipline not getting it getting things in on your on your terms just your terms alone we have early look of an imbalances coming up here 20 period moving average look at the market here pulled right back here see all right, well, i got to just take care of a couple of things. Hopefully, I'll just get another trade in before the end of the day. If not, well, that's the way it rolls. All right, let me back, uh, jump back on here again. I apologize. This that video a, didn't go quite as uh, as expected as the, end of the day is now ended. And um, you can see we kind of just sold off at the end of the day. I was bu just busy doing some other research and stuff. And... Kind of let this market just kind of uh, flush out, but we, have a, you know, I was really concentrating on the retail stocks. Um, just want to review. We did miss one really great divergence, and I just want to go back and, to and concentrate on that for a second, as we could go back here a second. We left off here. Um, There's a couple good trades this morning. Then we moved up. We had lunch, and at, at, during lunchtime, we actually seen this market here move up a little. Um, and then right at this point, again, we have a, we have a couple different indicators we want to pay attention to. One I call the Ram and the Bush indicator, which is just a different time frame. It's, you know, on our stochastic settings, um, you know, really represents this divergence with the higher and the low. And look at that reversal candle. And even though it didn't come down that far, it acted like it should. Now, you're not really seeing it on here in the 9 to 3, but you are seeing it on the Ram and the Bush very clearly. But even a better one, and this one was super clear. Was one that happened here, um, right about at 140, a real clear cut divergence. You can see it on the on the 14.3 uh, stochastics, and then you can actually, again, you can actually see it on the ram in the bush. <laughs> Sounds funny when I say that so often. That was a real tremendous short in this uh, short opportunity here, and um, from that point on, it drifted all the way down, and then at that point here, we had a uh, a nice little triple thread setup uh, with a reversal candle popped up here nice to a retracement remember we want to take it off into the retracement there um, you know we have to have an exit strategy even though it didn't rotate back up all the way we start to pay attention to some of the uh, other lines on the screen and one of the big lines here whenever we break down through a recognizable trend uh, it's very important the trend line is a is, um, is identified by that straight line here it's really a identif whenever you have a trend that starts uh, you know basically at the lows of the day comes up here tags it and goes through once we break down through that it's a good rule to look at once you break down to that trend line you look for that retest of it in this case it's usually a good trading opportunity especially if you get a triple threat or reversal you look for that as your target we push back down and then it actually came back again and it, it continues to always play out these trend lines continue to play out well and that we had to rotate it back up. Um, and that was just a, a fantastic setup there again. So, again, stressing on this video, 
mainly the patience involved, the discipline involved, the wait for your setups. As you can see, even if you didn't take all the setups, or you know, how could you? I was not even on the air today. But even if you uh, recognize them and don't take them, you can look back and see. Yes, they are, you know, quality setups. Uh, they do give you an opportunity to profit in the market. Uh, and uh, then we had that uh, last hour of the trade, a market here kind of just chopping around and eventually selling off here. Um, you know, as we start to roll over and we have the momentum to the downside, we dropped off through our main pivot area, flushed out, bounced back up and closed. But lots of times we get closer into that 3.30, we, we, you know, even though the setups will appear, um, you know, you have to be a little more, uh, a little bit more um, cautious, especially, uh, you know, end of the month it was, we have, you know, um, you know, kind of little reshuffling of portfolios we have little uh, anything that happens here in the last 15 minutes of the trade closing imbalances etc so that's it it was a pretty uh, interesting day for a Friday normally we don't look at much on Fridays but I got to tell you one thing uh, and I'm going to talk about this more on uh, this week's watch list which I'm going to be doing next I want to get this out and uh, just send this out into the world and we're going to focus on this week's watch list coming up. So let me get this. Let me turn this off and get working. Have a great. Oh, and by the way, if you want more information, because this is a kind of a public, uh, a pl public video here, just uh, you know, come by uh, Day Trading Radio every single day. We're on the air live, just like turning on your TV. You can see the charts. You can see everything, um, and you can even see the after hours. If, if, if this was a Monday or Tuesday, would the futures, uh, you know, would be running overnight, and you could actually come in and. Uh, experience day trading radio 24 7 but as of friday have a great weekend and we'll see you monday at and on the show